Hello everyone, my name is Marco Benalcazar and in this video I'm going to present our work entitled A Hand Gesture Recognition System Using EMG and Reinforcement Learning A Q Learning Approach. I am the director of the Artificial Intelligence and Computer Vision Research Lab at the Department of Computer Science and Informatics of the Escuela Politecnica Nacional located in Quito, Ecuador. Before starting this presentation, I'm going to present the list of the co-authors of this work, Juan Pablo Vascones, Lorena Isabel Barona López, Leonardo Valdivieso Caraguay, Patricio Cruz, and Robin Álvarez. If you want to know more about the work that we execute in this lab, please visit this link of our webpage, or follow us on Facebook using this link, or send me an email using this email address. In this work, we present a hand gesture recognition model that takes as input EMG signals recorded on the forearm and returns a sequence of labels where each label belongs to this set of six elements where the first five elements denote the gestures that we are interested in recognizing in this work, which are wave in, wave out, fist, double tap, and finger spread. Everything else we will refer as no gesture. EMGs are electric signals produced by the skeletal muscles of the forearm when they contract to produce force of movement of the hand. There are different domains where we can apply hand gesture recognition systems. For instance, we can use these systems to control robots or hand prostheses like we show in this picture. We can also use hand gesture recognition systems for medical applications where, for example, doctors can use these systems to remotely operate computers or displays. We can also use these systems for video games and to develop human-to-human -human interfaces. A human-to-human -human interface allows a person, through his or her uh, gestures, to control the movement of another person's hand. For developing hand gesture recognition systems, we can use a sliding window approach. Under this approach, we need to define a window of a given size with a given stride, and we also need to train a classification model. With these two elements, we can process a whole EMG. We place the window on the left side of the EMG, and the part of the EMG that we observe through this window is fed to this classifier, which then predicts this label. If we process the EMG using this approach, we are going to obtain as a result of the recognition a sequence of labels like the sequence we show in this slide. Therefore, hand gesture recognition can be treated as a sequential decision-making problem where in each step we need to predict a label for each window observation. To solve this problem, we can train models that have some memory using supervised learning. These models can be recurring neural networks, or we can train this classifier using reinforcement learning. This is the approach that we decided to take for this work. In this slide, we summarize the main findings that we encounter by reviewing some words published in the scientific literature about hand gesture recognition systems. Proposed models solve only the classification but not recognition problem. Indeed, these two problems are referred as the same problem in the scientific literature when indeed they are two different problems. Model evaluation is executed using only small datasets which are composed of few users and few samples per user. There are only few works that tackle the problem of hand gesture recognition using reinforcement learning. Therefore, it is difficult to know how well this approach, reinforcement learning, works for developing hand gesture recognition systems. Based on these problems, the main contributions of this work are the following two. We successfully combine EMG signals, a reinforcement learning method, namely Q-learning, and feedforward neural networks to develop a hand gesture recognition model. For developing our model, we use a public large dataset called EMG EPN 612, composed of 612 users. 
The methodology that we follow to design the proposed model is composed of two stages. In the first stage, we design it and then train it, the proposed model. And in the second stage, we assess the quality of its performance using the classification and recognition accuracies. Here we have the general architecture of the proposed model. The proposed model is composed of five modules, which are data acquisition, pre-processing, feature extraction, classification, and post-processing. For data acquisition, we use the Mayoan band sensor. In preprocessing, we first run an algorithm to correct the orientation of the baselet, which is a common problem when we use to record EMGs with bracelet type sensors. To process each EMG, we use a sliding window. If 100 times the division of the energy of a window observation by the energy of the wave out gesture is greater than or equal to 17%, then the window observation that we are processing is passed to the next step, which is feature extraction. Otherwise, that window observation is labeled as no gesture. For feature extraction, we use five different functions, which are the standard deviation, the absolute envelope, the mean absolute value, the energy function, and the root mean square function. These functions are applied to the raw signal observed through each window. Here we have the equations for each of these functions. These five functions were applied to each of the five channels of the ENGs that we processed in this work. Therefore, for each window observation, we have a feature vector of 40 components. For classification, we use Q-learning to train or classifier. Q-learning is an off-policy reinforcement learning algorithm. We model our problem as a partially observable Markov decision process, POMDP, because we don't have access to the whole description of each state of our environment. For function approximation, we use an artificial feedforward neural network, which predicts the value of each state and action. In this case, in this case, sorry, a, instead of having states, we have observables which describe partially each state. When we combine Q-learning with neural networks, we have what we call QNN, a QNN model. We use this formula to update the weights of this model, of this QNN model, where W denotes the weights of the network, alpha denotes the learning rate, R denotes the reward function, gamma denotes the discount factor, and this term here denotes the grading of the outputs of the QNN with respect to W. To improve the training of the, our QNN model, we use experience replay. Here we have the general diagram of the reinforcement learning that we are using. The agent is the neural network and the environment is composed by each of the EMG signals that we have to process. For each window observation, at each time step, we obtain a feature vector, which is called in the language of reinforcement learning an observable. The agent takes this observable and predicts an action, which in our case is the label for each window observation. If the label predicted by the agent is correct, then we assign a positive reward to the agent, otherwise we assign a negative value, and in this way we train our agent using reinforcement learning. In this picture, we can see this process of training our agent in a more clear way. We have a whole EMG and these rectangles denote each window observation. Here we have a curve that represents the labels of the ground truth which for this case correspond to the wave being gesture. And here we have the curve 
of the labels of the vector predicted by the agent, which we will call a prediction. Notice that for each window observation, when we train the agent, we assign or we give to the agent a reward of plus one. When the labels of the ground truth and the vector of predictions of the agent match, otherwise we assign negative one as the reward value. When the agent finishes processing the entire EMG, we assign an additional reward of plus 10 if the recognition was done successfully by the agent. Otherwise, we assign a reward, a reward of minus 10. The recognition is considered successful if the overlapping factor between the ground truth and the vector of predicted labels is greater than 70%. In our case, we also assign a label to the entire EMG to solve the classification problem, and this label is computed as the mode, as the mode among the, all the labels that are returned by the agent. To design and evaluate the proposed model, we use the dataset called EMG EPN 612, which can be downloaded from this link. This dataset is composed of EMGs of 612 users, out of which 75% are men and the remaining 25% are women. This dataset was split into two groups of 306 users each. All the EMGs in this dataset were acquired using the Myron band. We will refer to the first group as set A and the second group we will refer as set B. Set A was used to define the architecture and the hyperparameters of our model. For each user and for each gesture, we have 50 EMGs. Out of these 50 EMGs, 25 were used for training and the remaining 25 were used for validation. Data of set B was used to test the performance of the developed model, and for each person and for each gesture, we also have 50 EMGs, 25 of which were used for training, and the 25 remaining were used for testing. In this case, we trained a model for each user. Each EMG lasts 5 seconds and was acquired using 200 Hz of frequency. In the validation procedure, we tested two different, 72 different hyperparameter configurations by using different number of neurons, learning rates, momentums, and mini batch size. In this table, we summarize the best hyperparameters that we obtained. We use a four-layer artificial feedforward neural network with four inputs. The hidden layers have 50 neurons each, and the output has six neurons. We use a window of 300 points, an initial momentum of 0.3, a mini batch size of 25 samples, an epsilon greedy value of 0.2, and we use this formula for the learning rate decay. In this graph, we can see an example of how the average of wins levels up or progresses with the increase of the number of iterations, and this the graph shows that about 800 iterations are enough to level up this curve. Here we have different results in the validation procedure for different learning rates and different strides for the classification and recognition results. The best results were obtained when we used a learning rate of 0.03 with a stride of 40 points. Here we have the confusion matrix for the model developed, and this confusion matrix was obtained in the testing procedure. The results are, for set A, the classification average was 90.78% with a standard deviation of 20%. The recognition accuracy was 
0.43% with an standard deviation of 21%. For test B, that was a, a for set B that was used for testing, the classification results and the recognition results are 90.47% with an standard deviation of 1424%. And for recognition, we obtained an average of 87.51% with and a standard deviation of 14.1%. Based on these results, we can draw the following conclusions. We have proposed a hand gesture recognition system based on QNNs to classify and recognize five gestures using EMGs. These EMGs come from a public dataset. The system was trained and tested using a dataset of 612 users where the classification accuracy reached up to 90.78% and the recognition accuracy reached up to 87.51%. Using Q-learning for hand gesture recognition allows an agent to learn from online experience. Future work includes testing auto reinforcement learning algorithms to create an state estimator from the observations to evaluate the proposed PO-MDP model with belief states, as well as testing on more datasets. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any question, I will be happy to answer.